What's up, guys? Welcome. Hey, John. <laughs> Every, everyone give a, our special guest, John Adarian, a warm welcome, co-founder of MarketRebellion.com. How's it going? It's great. Uh, Alyssa, uh, although if you would have told me Arucha was on here, I wouldn't have come on. Oh, yeah, I know. You two have already met. Hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, great to see I, you, man. Actually, it's, go... it's great. And to all of you over at IBD uh, and investors, uh, uh, this is a thrill. I'm glad to be back with you. And what a week to talk about, right? Seriously. Ah. Yeah, so much going on. Yeah, everyone's going to have to go back in in our archives, check out the podcast episode with Arusha and John. But yeah, give us your thoughts about what's going on. Our audience is just really wanting more information about what is going on with GME, all of these short squeezes. What are your thoughts? Well, um, first of all, uh, this Wall Street bets crowd, um, there are a number of really sophisticated traders in there. Um, they're being tarred with a brush, people thinking, oh, they just got lucky. No, 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 they didn't. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not saying everybody in that room is terribly sophisticated, but a lot of them are sophisticated. I see what they're talking about, um, the, the sorts of strategies that they're doing when you just keep rolling up an option and an option and an option to squeeze things, Alyssa. I think that is uh, exactly what a pro would do if they could. Um, and these guys have the firepower, which at the beginning of last week was 2 million. As of this morning, it went over 6 million people. 6 million. Now, oh. granted, not all of those are 100,000 or million dollar accounts, obviously, mm -hmm. but a number of them are pretty large. And when you act in concert, um, it's not surprising that they can do incredibly well as far as driving a stock in a direction, but they get help. Um, and the help, quite frankly, was uh, number one, they were they did their homework. They went after uh, somebody who was, they didn't know who it was, I don't think, but they went after somebody, in this case, um, Melvin Capital and Gabe over there. Uh, they went after them because 65 million share float. Uh, for your listeners, Alyssa, Mm -hmm. Apple has almost 18 billion shares. Granted, they just did a four for one stock split. But when you're comparing stocks, and if you were looking, as I am, for stocks that could have similar sorts of uh, disruption to GameStop, you would start with stocks that have, okay, let me see, under 100 million shares outstanding. And then how much of that's in the float? In the case of GameStop, less than half of that 65 million shares is float, meaning that the rest is held by insiders and by funds that only can sell when they rebalance um, and so forth. So a lot of that, in other words, you're talking about 30 million shares. Um, and I don't know how much that Mr. Uh, Plotkin had or Gabe had for Melvin Capital. I don't know what his position was. I don't pretend to, except that he was short. And he should have been short through puts, by the way, because you don't get squeezed then. You can only lose what you paid for when you buy a put option. And believe me, these same traders on Wall Street bets were buying puts in March. You can look at it. You can look at the board. They were buying puts. This is not this is not a one-off situation where oh they just got lucky. They you know they press their bets. Um, they do a lot of things that I don't do. You know YOLO trades and things like that where it's you only live once. I'm all in. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. All that money in. Good yeah. for them. Good for them. Again, that's not how I trade, um, but I do trade uh, stock options and puts, puts and calls, and I watch for changes, big changes in open interest and things like that. And the fact that we're seeing 43 million option contracts a day changing hands in January so far. I mean, this is the last trading day in January, but nonetheless, uh, we had a 60 million option trade this week, guys. That's crazy. That's just two days ago. Um, yesterday, it was like 50 something million. This is extreme volume and people are naive, Alyssa, if they think that this is um, uh, just a bunch of cowboys or people that don't know what they're doing. There are some of that, maybe even a lot of that, but they're not the ones driving. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I so think John, that's the question. Go, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead, so, John, what do you think about how the Melvin Capital kind of dug in uh, their he heels, put in all this money rather than, you know, our, our approach to trading is when the trade goes against you and you're getting killed, get out of the trade and yeah, yeah live to fight another day. What I mean, what do you think of the the choice to to kind of not, well, Chris, <laughs> not exit the trade? I, I obviously wasn't uh, privy to the conversation that they had. Mm -hmm. But I it could have gone something like this because he went to two really smart investors um, and traders, obviously, Stevie Cohen and Ken Griffin, the richest man in Illinois, um, might might be just this much less risk than Stevie Cohen, but nonetheless, he went to those two and he said, I need to get refinanced, be able to trade. And I bet they told him something like this, okay, here's the way we're gonna play it. We'll invest in your fund, but here's what we want. You gotta cover your short and you gotta announce that you covered your short. And he's sitting there going, Okay. And they said, by doing that, stock will spike. Now you reestablish a short, but you do it through puts rather than stock. So you're not going to get squeezed out. I put on short positions out in April to wait for this stock to finally come back to normal. Um, will it? I don't know. I put, you know, it was relatively large trade. I put 44,000 on the trade. Um, mm -hmm. Full disclosure, I said that on TV as well as tweeting it. But um, it's not that I'm betting against the Wall Street bet crowd. It's not that I uh, think that GameStop is incredibly overvalued. I do. But we all know that, you know, these things can go on longer, Chris, than our liquidity. So <laughs> I put on a limited risk trade out in April, waiting and saying, you know what? If, if the stock does break back down to 60 bucks or lower by April, I could have a five or a 10 bagger. In other words, I could turn 44,000 into 300,000 into 400,000, whatever. But I have a defined amount of risk. So, Chris, what I think was probably happening was Melvin is probably still in a short position, but I bet those two guys were smart enough to counsel Mr. Uh, Gabe into uh, perhaps turning it into puts rather than in stock where you can be incredibly squeezed. Uh so on your trade, are you buying the puts? Because when I, you know, we talked about it uh, the other day and was looking at, at the, uh, the puts and the implied volatility is through the roof. It was like 300%, something like that. So are you buying the puts or are you doing a, a spread trade or something like that? I did a spread trade. Okay. So um, in, in real terms, I bought about $200,000 worth of those um, April 60 puts. I sold March 50 puts against it. So for instance, I'm thinking if something happens, Chris, between now and March and the stock comes back down but doesn't make it to 50, those March 50 puts poof, are vanished. They're gone because they expire worthless if the stock's above 50. Um, meanwhile, I'll still have my April puts and I'm short some out of the money puts um, out in April against it already. So that's where, like I say, I've defined my risk down to 44,000. You know, take it if, if you're, that's about a hundred lot of, uh, of that trade folks. Mm -hmm. So if you're a smaller trader and again, no disrespect, um, but if you're somebody that instead of trading a hundred lot, which is 10,000 shares, you trade a, uh, a 10 lot, which would be a thousand share position, that would cost you, you'd have about four thousand dollars at risk but you could turn the four thousand into 12 or 16 or whatever you get it three or four to one whatever mm -hmm. it goes to so that's what i did chris and i did it because i wanted to set it and forget it i wanted to just put this trade on let all the craziness play out like you said 300 i think i was getting almost 400 <laughs> percent volatility in march uh -huh. and then Okay, let's see how it goes. I know sooner or later, this is not going to be the shiny object. They'll have moved on to something else. And I think that probably happens within the next three months. And if it does, those March puts are probably going to be worthless. Maybe my April puts will be worth something. But if they're not, okay. And by the way, um, uh, again, all of this is full disclosure, guys. Whatever we make on this trade, I'm giving away to Barstool Fund, which is Dave Portnoy's 
fund to help small businesses. It started initially just for restaurants, and I think he's expanded it. I yeah. applaud him for that. I think it's a brilliant idea. I know Chamath uh, also yeah. said the same thing. He, he's giving, I think, about half a million dollars um, to that Barstool Fund. Tom Brady gave money to it. Mm -hmm. So many generous people have given to it. So I'm not saying you have to root for me so I can give more money <laughs> to Barstool, but that's what that's I'm what doing. That's what you're doing Chris. here. Very cool. And, you know, you mentioned the level of sophistication here with the Wall Street bets crowd and then kind of being underestimated or painted with a, a different brush here. And now we have this other layer of drama with Robin Hood and the restrictions and that kind of thing and that getting people like Dave Portnoy really fired up here. What do you think the fallout is is going to be from from what's happening in that respect? Well, Alyssa, it is just crazy. Um, now, everybody on here uh, knows that this is not normal. Um, these are unusual times in GameStop. Uh, the stock has this huge short interest, although it came all the way down to under 100%, <laughs> but it's popped back up to about 125 or 130%, which again, those are crazy numbers. But there are a number of stocks on Wall Street that are like that. And um, I, I think Robinhood was ill-prepared. I made a joke this morning. I was working out on my treadmill and I was sweating. And I said, I'm sweating like a risk manager at Robinhood. <laughs> 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 because, I mean, these guys, uh, uh, I don't care how good you are at risk management. If you've got this army of people trading calls through you and all of a sudden you have to shut them off for whatever reason and i will be very interested in ted cruz and aoc when they bring these people up on capitol hill because you know they will Alyssa. they'll bring them up on capitol hill and say why did you shut these guys down and why did you say you can't buy anymore because we all know if you're buying an option i mean robin hood doesn't have portfolio margining so if you're buying an option, you have to fully pay for it. Arusha knows that. All of you guys on this list know it. Chris knows it. Ed knows it. You know it, Alyssa. You buy an option for $5, which is a $500 option, since every option is for 100 shares of stock. You have to have 500 in your account to do it. Now, when you're buying stock, they'll give you two to one margin, right? Usually. Right now, they've limited it. They've said you've got to have 100% we're not lending you a dime because we're out of money. We had to tap a billion dollar line of credit um, from our banks to have enough money to cover this stuff. So, you know, you have to question, A, is Robinhood properly capitalized in the first place for all the accounts that they have? Second of all, um, they're reliant on payment for order flow. I'm not gonna demonize the people who buy that order flow from them. I'm not gonna demonize Robin Hood for taking that money. They provide zero commission. So how do you make money? Well, you make money primarily from um, getting paid for that order flow. In other words, somebody wants to buy 10 options. One of those high frequency firms will pay you 50 cents a contract roughly um, for those 10 contracts. So when you're doing millions of contracts a day, you're taking in millions of dollars in payment even though you're not getting any commission, you're getting that, that zero for commission. What if those guys start saying, you know what? This is too volatile, Robinhood. We're not going to pay you for your order flow. Robinhood says, well, I have an obligation to execute for Alyssa, who has an account with us. Not that you do, Alyssa, but if you did, <laughs> you send your order in and you're expecting zero commission. And all of a sudden they say, well, It'll cost us money to get Alyssa's position filled because all the people we normally sell it to have told us, stop, we don't, we're not going to pay you right now. I think that may have been what happened. And if it is what happened, um, obviously, uh, they had to shut it down. They had to say, you can't buy anymore because we can't execute your trade. We're not set up to pay commissions to execute your trades. So I, I right. think that's one of the many things that may have happened. And I think, you know, all of these firms, I want to see WhatsApp, I want to see the SMS, I want to see the emails, 
from the founders of Robinhood, from the risk managers of Robinhood, from TD Ameritrade, from um, anybody that cut off the ability of people to trade. I want to see if there's any collusion, if there was anybody that basically said, hey, we got to stop letting this happen because you know we're being tapped on the shoulder from a regulator or we're being tapped on the shoulder by the guys we sell order to flow to. I think there, this is going to be a crazy investigation and people need to find out, you know, they need to get to the bottom of it. Yeah, to have some level of transparency. Now, uh, another question for you would be, this story extends beyond GameStop. So uh, there, there's a lot of other companies that are being targeted. So I, I think maybe a question from the audience would be, okay, how can I spot another one of these GameStops, but before it explodes? And, and how should I be thinking about the residual impacts of this moving forward on other stocks in the market? Well, um, number one, you can come over to Market Rebellion <laughs> because a lot of these footprints, Alyssa, are in the market before these stocks move. Um, so for instance, GameStop, we December 23rd, I was on CNBC Live and we talked about GameStop at that time, it was $21 a share. And we said, they're buying big time upside calls in GameStop. Why is that? Are they gonna blow out the numbers? I doubt it. Um, you know, but whatever, because this is a company that, you know, I bring in a DVD for a video game, get a hundred buck credit, and then I buy another video game used or new, pay 150 bucks, they get the net the difference between the two. Um, that's a fine business, but it's, it's not a business that all of a sudden goes from 21 bucks to 500 bucks like it was just two days ago. But Nonetheless, there were big buys in that one. There were big buys in Express, EXPR. There were big buys in AMC. And here's another one, Alyssa, um, AMCX, because AMC, of course, <laughs> is the theater chain. And we all get the idea that during pandemic, you know, that was a pretty crummy business to be in because they were shut down. And even if they opened for a small number of people, Nobody was buying the one thing that they have that's profitable, which is concessions. They don't make hardly anything on tickets. I know you're thinking, oh, $17 a ticket, they're making money. Yeah, but they're paying those theaters for the right to show those movies. They make it on concessions. That's why that hot dog costs five bucks <laughs> and all that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, and that bucket of popcorn costs you 10. Um, oh, yeah. They didn't get any of that for months and months and months, and they just did that big refi. And then even people like my friend, Andrew Ross Sorkin said, people are getting this story wrong. They're buying Express Networks. I mean, I'm sorry, AMC Networks instead of AMC. They're, they're all screwed up. No, they're not. Um, AMC Networks had a 100% short interest on it. When you're 100% short interest, you're on my radar. And you're probably on the Wall Street bets guys' yeah. radar as well. So um, number one, we saw a lot of these lining up because of unusual call activity, perhaps from the moderators on Wall Street bets, that they were setting up their positions already, Alyssa. Um, and, um, but when your question, to answer your question directly without just plugging my service, I'll say, look for large short interests in small floats. In other words, like we already said, GameStop, 65 million shares. Um, you know, you look at Microsoft, Apple, um, Texas Instruments, any of those, you're talking about billion share floats, not 60 million share. And a float of that was only 30. Only half of the outstanding shares were available in that float. So um, when you're talking about uh, stocks with a thin or a small number of shares that are in the float, and you're talking about big short op open interest, uh, either big shorts in the stock, which is you know pretty easily available um, to find that information, or big call accumulations uh, in those same names. Those are the ones, Alyssa, that I would be going after. All right. Well, it's fascinating. I mean, we could definitely spend so much more time with you and we'll, you'll have to come back. We'll have sure. to do it again. We really appreciate you joining us. 
everyone make sure to follow John on Twitter. You can ask him more questions there, I'm sure. Uh, and we definitely hope you stay in touch. And I can just see by the comments that our audience really appreciated you joining the show. A lot oh, of great insights. So thank, thank you so guys. Much. Ed, I'm sorry we didn't get to talk this time, but um, Ed, <laughs> Marusha, um, Chris, pleasure to be on with you guys. Thank you. Thanks right. for joining us, John. Thank you so thanks, much. Uh, thanks a lot, John. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you wanna watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.